The lightsaber, arguably the most iconic science fiction weapon of all time. This is supposed to be a more elegant weapon. It is tidy and precise, and the wounds that it causes are cauterized and survivable. But if you honestly apply the power that a lightsaber should have to a person, death by lightsaber would be so much worse than the movie show. What makes a lightsaber such a formidable weapon is that it can cut through just about anything with nearly zero resistance, and that's awesome. But if a hot ring of plasma, for example, had enough energy running through it to cut through metal and bone like butter, many of the classic lightsaber battles we've enjoyed over the last 40 years of Star Wars films would have ended very differently. And by differently, I, I mean grosser, from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Yes, from a certain point of view, the correct one. A lightsaber cuts nothing like a sword does. A sword or another cutting edge cuts by applying a large force over a small surface area and applying that to some material that can't withstand the pressure and therefore the material moves itself out of the way. A lightsaber, though, cuts differently. The hyperheated blade isn't pushing any material out of the way. Instead, it is heating up the material in front of it and around it so hot that that material bubbles and boils and moves out of the way of the lightsaber. Technically then, all the material that a lightsaber is cutting through is either vaporizing or sublimating or both. Vaporization is going straight from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase, like water turning into steam, and sublimation is going directly from the solid phase into the gaseous phase, like say, part of your wrist turning directly into smoke. But both can happen when you're hit by a lightsaber. Oh, you smell bad on the outside. A change in a material's phase brings a change in volume. Atoms in a gaseous phase prefer to spread out and fill the volumes that they occupy, kind of like those stars there. But in a liquid phase, they are much closer together, and in a solid phase, they are even closer. Together, Pargs, get out! This volume difference is why death by lightsaber would be worse than you think. When you sublimate or vaporize material very quickly, it acts like a blast wave from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Yes. Let's take water as an example. Wait, wrong movie. If you raise water up to its boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius and then you add a little bit of extra energy to vaporize it, that water, as it goes from the liquid phase to the gaseous phase, will increase in volume by a factor of 1,500 times. When vaporization or sublimation happens slowly, it's manageable. Think about bringing a pot of water to boil on the stove. It's fine, but when it happens all at once, it's more or less a bomb. Just look at what happens when some dum-dum throws a water bottle full of water into a vat of molten metal. Yeah, the same thing would happen if you hit a water bottle with a lightsaber. Pull! And the same thing would happen to you. Your body is mostly water. If you wanted to put a figure on it, it's around 60%, but not like this. Every single one of your cells has some water in it. And although we're not talking about a vat of molten metal with a lightsaber in a previous Because Science, we calculated that the power output in heat for a lightsaber is in the 35 megawatt range, which is like, just sometimes it, it takes a second, which is like having a nuclear submarine engine's worth of power in the palm of your hand. Now, given all of this, and everything that we went through in terms of phase changes and volume and temperature, why do you really think that a lightsaber interacting with your body would be anything less than totally terrible? I am about to ruin your conception of lightsabers as elegant weapons, or make them more awesome, from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Yes. Now let's say that my target is Qui-Gon Jinn. The first thing that we have to do is turn on the lightsaber. Ah! Oh, 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 okay, okay, that was bad. Okay, uh, that was weird, but. All right, so the first thing that we do is turn on the lightsaber. Okay, oh, 
Okay. Let's just ignore for a second that if a lightsaber is radiating enough heat energy to make it through blast doors like butter, then turning one on would light everyone in the room immediately on fire. No, really, with megawatts of power coming out in such a small area, it would feel like standing literally this close to the sun. So let's, let's ignore that for a second. Okay, so the first thing that we do is Turn on the lightsaber. Okay, <laughs> we're good. Oh, let's do it. Oh! Things are gonna go downhill pretty fast, so let's take this step by step. The first thing that happens is that the blade oh, approaches Qui-Gon Jinn's body. When it's around 10 centimeters away from his body, it is putting out enough radiant heat energy to flash all of his clothes away into cinders, and the first few millimeters of his skin are vaporized off, leaving just charred flesh that is now glowing a brilliant ember orange. But this is just in the first 10 milliseconds. When the blade actually pierces Qui-Gon Jinn, it is now encased in his flesh. And so it is vaporizing about a kilogram of his water per second. Now, that water has no other place to go, so the steam exits his wound at Mach 1. And because all of this is happening in 100 microseconds, this is a steam explosion, like the water bottle in the molten metal. And that explosion blows Qui-Gon Jinn apart, and the force of the the pressure, oh god, his body parts are everywhere and they're raining back down and hitting the rest of the lightsaber and creating their own steam explosions and everything is on fire and it is disgusting. It is absolutely terrible. Hey. Oh! This disgusting chain of events would apply to all of the humanoid deaths by lightsaber that we've seen on screen. Qui-Gon Jinn exploded. Darth Maul exploded. Obi-Wan Kenobi, even if you force ghosts out of here, old man, I'm still burning all your clothes off. Jango Fett, I think if I vaporize your neck, I will turn your head because it's in a helmet into a meat rocket. Han Solo. Okay, so Han Solo. He was in contact with a lightsaber longer than anyone else. 15 seconds, if you count it out. That is theoretically enough time to vaporize half of his body. His fate would be the worst. So, death by lightsaber would be so much worse than the movie show. If they really did have the obscene power outputs that allows them to do what we see them do in the films, then they wouldn't tidily slice up targets. They would ignite and explode them, especially if it was watery flesh. This is not an elegant weapon at least under our assumptions of what it actually is. Although it is still very much awesome because science, but I'm not gonna turn it on or else I might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> science. I know that I've also done an episode on why a lightsaber doesn't burn your hands off. And I spent a lot of this episode saying that it would burn everyone's faces off in the room. And that's because we have to, in these analyses, determine what we're willing to accept and what we're willing not to accept. If we want lightsabers to be plasma weapons that don't burn your hands off, then there's something like a fusion reactor and they only have a few grams in this blade. And okay, it wouldn't burn your hands off because it's magnetically contained, but then it wouldn't be able to get through many things. On the other hand, if we wanted to be able to get through a blast door like butter, it has, it, it has to be putting out enough energy to melt your face. So I leave that up to you. I mean, it's all from a certain point of view. Oh, Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. A big thanks in this episode goes out to Matterbeam, the science fiction blogger Matterbeam who runs the Tough SF blog, which you can check out in the show notes. He gave me a ton of awesome math and helped me out a lot with this episode. Also thanks to Dr. Luke Campbell who did the same. If you want even more science, check out Watch, also on Nerdist and the space program on projectalpha.com where if you sign up, you can get this show two days earlier than everyone else, and I'm putting cool stuff up on these handles. I can prove it if you go there. Bye. <laughs>